Let's continue with the next topic on electrochemistry. We'll be learning about electrolysis and electrolytic cells. Electrolysis is a process in which a non-spontaneous reaction is made to occur using electrical energy. And electrolysis is carried out in an electrolytic cell. And this is a case in which electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. Before we proceed further, let us understand the difference between an electrochemical cell and an uh, electrolytic cell. The electrochemical cell, which is also called as the galvanic cell, in this case, the chemical energy is converted into electrical energy. Or in other words, I can say that an electric energy is produced because of, the, of a chemical reaction. Whereas in an electrolytic cell, electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. And in case of an electrochemical cell, the anode is negative and in case of an electrolytic cell, the anode is positive. An electrochemical cell has a positive cathode and an electrolytic cell has a negative cathode. Look at the difference in the sign of anode and cathode in an electrochemical and an electrolytic cell. So please make a note of it. And uh, whatever be the charge on the anode or the cathode, in both the cells, Oxidation takes place at the anode and reduction takes place at the cathode. And electrochemical cell is a spontaneous reaction, whereas an electrolytic cell is a non-spontaneous reaction, which is made to occur due to the passage of electric current. So the more important point you have to notice is the sign on anode and cathode in both the cells. Let's consider the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride. Sodium chloride has to be in the molten stage in order to conduct electricity. And when you are uh, ma uh, passing, uh, just look at the sodium chloride solid separating as sodium solid and chlorine gas. This is an almost impossible reaction because the bonding between sodium and chlorine are pretty strong. And uh, the ionic bond, the strong ionic bond, form between them become makes it uh, difficult to separate the sodium and the chlorine uh, from the sodium chloride and the value of delta G0 a positive 768 also supports and therefore this is a non-spontaneous reaction. So what we do is we force this reaction to happen by passing electric current. First we melt that is we fuse sodium chloride solid and convert it into molten form. When you pass electric current through it it ionizes into sodium ions and chloride ions. And uh, the positive sodium ion moves towards the cathode, the negatively charged cathode. And at cathode, as always, reduction takes place, gains electrons and gets formed as sodium metal. The negative Cl, uh, negative, uh, Cl ion moves towards the anode. And uh, as oxidation takes place at the uh, anode, uh, um, gets converted into chlorine gas. Therefore, when you pass electric current over molten sodium chloride, sodium is produced at the cathode and chlorine gas is produced at the anode. Let's continue and uh, do the electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride. Aqueous sodium chloride means uh, water is also present. Therefore, sodium chloride will ionize as sodium ion and chloride ion, but water will also ionize as hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. So, the presence of uh, hydrogen and hydroxide ion, so at the cap, uh, cathode, we will have a reaction for water and hydrogen ions also. So, sodium, hydrogen ion, they, uh, they are all at the cathode. Sodium ion accepts an electron and gets reduced to sodium. The hydrogen ion will accept two electrons and becomes hydrogen gas and the water, there is another reaction where water can also get reduced to hydrogen. Out of the three reactions, it is the hydrogen gas reaction which occurs prominently and therefore we get hydrogen gas at the cathode. So at the anode, oxidation takes place. The chloride ion and the OH- ion moves towards the anode and of course the oxidation of water can also take place. Out of all the things, the reaction happening, you see that the chloride ion gives you chlorine and water gives you oxygen. Looking at the E0 values, we would have preferred uh, oxygen to be formed at the anode. But 
there is something called as an overvol uh, overvoltage of oxygen because of this the e0 value of oxygen reaction becomes larger than the um it uh, or i can say that the chloride reaction is more preferred than the formation of oxygen reaction and therefore chlorine rea is formed at the anode and not oxygen therefore electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride produces hydrogen at the cathode and chlorine gas at the anode and sometime it's possible that the sodium ion which is present in the um, cathode can react with the hydroxide ion and can form sodium hydroxide so therefore this is also a method for the form of for the uh, uh, production of sodium hydroxide so let's do the electrolysis of water water will ionize this hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion and this is a non spontaneous reaction and as usual let the uh, oxidation takes place at the anode and reduction takes place at the cathode so what happens at the cathode is hydrogen ion moves towards the cathode gets reduced and forms hydrogen gas therefore we get hydrogen gas at the cathode so at anode oxidation takes place though we have the hydroxide ion what actually happens at the anode is is the oxidation of water giving you oxygen gas even if you write the reaction with hydroxide ion we are going to get oxygen gas only therefore electrolysis of uh, water gives you hydrogen at the cathode and oxygen at the anode this is the last slide which gives you some idea on uh, the electrolysis of various compounds and what is formed at the cathode and what is formed at the anode so or i can say the summary of whatever we have learned so far sodium chloride the molten gives you sodium at the cathode and chlorine at the anode sodium chloride aqueous gives you hydrogen at the cathode and chlorine at the anode water gives you hydrogen at the cathode and oxygen at the anode and dilute sulfuric acid if you pass electro, uh, electric current through it we get hydrogen at the cathode and the oxygen at the anode and with lead bromide lead comes at the cathode and bromine is formed at the anode